In this video, we are going to focus more on settings in PDF plots. So where we left off in the previous video was with this specific plot here, where you see that we have plotted some different kind of functions, like the violet exponential function and the turquoise polynomial function here. And then we learned to plot some curves like the circle and some line plots. So currently there is very little information in our plots, so there's no explanation of what functions they are and so on. So what we are going to do is to change that, and we are going to do it by adding some more features to our plot. So first off, let's add a title to our plot. And when we are going to give in optional commands into our plot, we do it by using the square bracket. So in LaTeX, the square bracket is always optional inputs, while the curly brackets are always non-optional inputs. So to give it a title, we write in title and then equal, and then the title which we are going to give it. So for instance, since we plotted some functions here, let's just call it some functions. And if we now recompile, we see that the title has been added and it corresponds to what we wrote the title to be. We can also give a label to the axis with X label and correspondingly Y label. So let me just take an equal sign here and here. So as the name suggests, the X label names the X axis and the Y label names the Y axis. So here we can, for instance, write X axis. And when we recompile, it will give us a label here with X axis. And to make the front correct, I will just make the X in math mode. Now it has the math font on the X. And let's also give a Y label, for instance, Y values. And let's also have the math font on the Y. And when I recompile, we have a label here on the Y axis. Other things we can do is that here we have the domain argument several times. And let's say that all of these functions were supposed to have the same domain. Then we can move the domain argument up here with the optional arguments. And then we can remove it down here. And now what would happen is that all of these plots will use the same domain that is specified on the top. So if I now recompile, we see that all the functions are defined from 0 to 4 and we can't see the circle anymore because it becomes so small. But what we can do is instead of measuring the angle in degrees, we can measure it in radians by using the deck function. And now it will measure the x in radians instead of degrees. And now we get at least some part of the circle. And if we want the entire circle, we can, for instance, multiply by two here and by two here. Okay, so now we have the entire circle back. As we see now, since the exponential function grows a lot faster than the other function, we see that the other function seems like they are almost constants. So what we can do then is if we still want to have the same domain for all the functions, we can specify a max or a min value for the y values here. For instance, let's say that we don't want any uh, y values above 10. Then we can specify y max equals 10 to just cut off the graph above 10. Similarly, we can cut off below here by specifying y min. For instance, we can specify that we don't want any values below 2. So then we have zoomed in on the part between 2 and 10 so that we don't see any y values above 10 and we don't see any y values below 2. But let me just remove the last one. 
like this. So in this case, I have a lot of options which are now specified for a single graph. But let's say that I just copy this one so that now I have two graphs to work with. So this graph here and this graph here. And let's say that I want to change the height and the width of both graphs simultaneously. So what I can do is to just write here width and then change the width to 20 centimeters and just recompile and just go below here. So now it set the width to 20 centimeters and then I can take this width here and copy it up here so that I have the same thing on both graphs. But there is a way to do it simultaneously on both graphs. And that is to go up here in the preamble and change the pgf plot settings with the pdf plot set function. And what I can do now is, for instance, to say that the width is going to be, let's take text width. So if I compile now, I will get that both the first and the second graph change their width. And now both of them has the text width as their width. And I can do the same thing with height. So now I'm changing the height for both the plots on the same time. And let's just set it to half the width. So now I change the height and width for both plots simultaneously instead of doing it one by one. So up here it's really convenient to place all the arguments where you want them to be true for all the plots in your document. For instance, let's say that you're not too happy with having a box here. You want the lines to be centered. So what you can do to change the axis lines is to write axis lines, and then you can specify how you want them to look. For instance, if you write center and recompile, it will make sure that where the X and the Y axis where they meet are the origin. So the coordinate zero, zero. If I change it to left, all the axes will move to the left side, like this. And now where they meet is going to be the left side and not necessarily in the coordinate zero, zero. So here you see it's a bit below zero. You can also place them right. So now the coordinates are placed on the right hand side and you see you have some problems with the title in this case. But my favorite is probably to just have them centered so that you know that where the X and the Y axis meet is in the origin. Some other settings you can do is to change how often the tick marks are. And here you would probably not change it for all of the graphs, but just for one or two of them. So if you want, for instance, the X ticks to be in intervals of one instead of two. So here you see they go two, four, six, eight, and ten. And if you want them to be one, two, three, and so on, up to ten, you can specify any ticks marks by writing x ticks and then specify inside here how often you want them to be. So let's say that I want to change the ticks along the x axis to be a tick mark on every whole number instead of every half number, I can specify it inside here. So then I can take one and two, for instance, and if I compile, I will see that one and two are marked then. And let's say the last number I want to mark is three, like this. So now I specify the numbers here that I want to be marked on the x-axis. And I can do the same thing with the y-axis. So let's say again, I want to have instead of every second number, I want every number to have a tick mark. Then I can do one and two 
And then instead of writing three, four, and so on, I can do dot, dot, dot. So that will just continue in the pattern I've started. And then let's do it up to nine. And here you see that now we have marked every number up to nine. And I can do any interval with this dot, dot here. I can, for instance, do one and the next one at three and it will try to see the pattern. So here you see it jumps with intervals of two because they are three minus one is two and then it will continue with five, which is three plus two and so on. And I can also do it by 1.5 to make it even more dense, but then it starts looking rather ugly. So let me take it back to two just to have a tick mark on every every whole number. So the last thing I think my graph need here is an explanation on what the different curves and functions here actually are. And we can do that by adding a legend. So let's add that. So there are a couple of ways to add a legend, but probably the simplest one is to just write legend and just specify the information on each of the graphs. So for instance, the first one, which is a polynomial, we can just write the specific function. And if I recompile, so it will take the first function that we have inputted and just add the explanation that we have given to the first function. And if we want to go to the next function, we will use a comma. And then we can write something about the second function. So let's say that we want to call the second function g of x, for instance. So let's say that in the text we have given it the name g of x. So now and we can specify it here. And then we take a comma again. And then the question is, what do we want to call the third function? And let's just call it, for instance, lines, since it is a collection of lines. And finally, we can add a comma and just name the third function here, which is a circle. So let's add that as well. And if we recompile now, we see that we have given all the different functions here different names. So this is some of the basic settings. In the next video, we are going to do some other kinds of plots, for instance, bar plots and 3D plots. So see you again in the next video.